When you're trying to build your business through social media, it's easy to get caught up in trying methods that feel a little funky to you. It seems like it's what everyone else is doing, so it should be what you do too, right? In this week's Hot Seat episode, Tasha's first launch didn't sit well with her. She felt too salesy instead of focusing on the problems her ideal clients need help with. Add in that she has two different angles she can take her business in, it makes sense that she's feeling a little unsure of how to move forward. Jonathan takes Tasha through how he creates content that feels authentic, how to create lead magnets that both help and attract the right people, and how to create urgency even if you're an evergreen business. I'll be back at the end to recommend another episode. Enjoy. Uh, Real quick, why don't you just say like who you are, who you work with, and then what we want to talk about today. I I work with women um, that are struggling to achieve balance in their lives. They're struggling with usually some type of major health concern, Mm -hmm. um, whether that's autoimmune, um, gut dysfunction, metabolic issues, hormone health, stuff that doctors are really just kind of brushing off and saying, oh, you're totally normal. These are normal symptoms for women. And like, Right. best is not really addressing their concerns and and they kind of feel that all hope has been lost and then i show up so and things that were you know our medical system here in canada is uh is very much a a reactive system uh after yep. things break yeah to, to get back to a steady state um yeah. versus a let's optimize things and 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 sort of prevent stuff uh yep. well that's wonderful so Talk to me. I mean, you know, I, I I read your I read your intake here. You were talking about how your first launch kind of didn't feel authentic. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I, it felt really salesy for me. Mm-hmm. Um, too focused on trying to get people to engage in a sales conversation versus. Yeah addressing problems that my type of followers follow me for. And I think that another big issue that I've struggled personally with is the, how to integrate my aesthetic appeal as an individual with problems that people are facing. Um, So like, basically like, how do you look and feel like I do by addressing deeper rooted issues? So People want to have a good physique. Like, what are the issues that prevent you from getting there? People want to have healthy hair and skin. Like, what are some other dysfunctions that are mm-hmm. preventing you from having that? Like, how do you achieve that, like, youthful, glowing, um, attractive self by addressing these deeper rooted issues that are getting brushed off as well? So I kind of had to bring those two things together because of you know, a lot of people have been attracted to my page for an aesthetic yeah. initial reason, right? And my background's in competing. I'm always focused on like that beauty and the look and all that stuff. And so it was trying to kind of bridge the gap between those two so that people could understand, like, you have to do the healing in order to get here as well. You have to do the healing in order to get here. I like that line. Thank you. What was, what was a little bit of your journey? What was, what was some of these things that you kind of struggled with along the way to get there? Cause, cause everybody who comes to your page sees you now. Yeah. And, and there's obviously a, a chapter one through 50 before you get to the chapter 51 where I'm at, you know, right now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so I competed myself for, oh my gosh nine years, I think. Yeah. Um, and although my competitive journey was wonderful, I learned a lot about discipline. Um, I learned how to push myself beyond anything I ever thought that I was capable of doing. Um, a lot of damage was done more than I would have ever even known. And I always kind of prided myself on, you know, in my very short off seasons, trying to do as much repair and damage control as possible. But 
there wasn't really much time for that because I was so addicted to the instant gratification of winning shows and being, you know, shredded to the bone and getting the attention for that, that my off seasons were maybe three, four months. Um, And the way that shows are spaced out in Canada, you know, I was doing like three, four shows a year, but again, like, you know, three, four months apart. So it was kind of an odd timeline. Um, and year after year after year, and also I've been very open about the fact that I used anabolics and anti-estrogens and all sorts of illegal fat burners. And that stuff breaks your body down after a while, especially for women. Women are not built the same as men. Our hormones are much more complex. How Mm -hmm. they vary throughout the month is much more complex. So when you're suppressing those levels and those fluctuations over and over and over again for you know, nine years, yeah. your body's not going to be the way it once was. So I had tons and tons of issues. I was menopausal on blood work for two years after I was done competing. So, um, and not to mention the, the mental emotional side of thing, again, like only identifying with my success being based on being completely shredded. So yeah. not being shredded. I was like, I have no value. What am I bringing to the table? I'm not, you know, didn't have the same drive. It was, it was just not good mentally or physically. And uh, honestly, the pandemic was a blessing in disguise for me there because it forced me to not compete for a year. And once I realized how much I was missing out on life, um, how much more productive I was, what else I could do beyond being stuck in that prep off season, prep off season kind of cycle um and just kind of learning more about my body and how I felt and really like recognizing that things were not working well um I'm one of those people that when something's not working well I want to learn everything about it in order to fix it like I'm a fixer I want to fix everything so I'm like okay how do I fix this so I started diving into functional health stuff and diving into learning about hormones and gut health and all the different systems that can be messed up, especially from competing, but for a variety of reasons and and how to repair those. Um, And then of course, in that process, starting to apply that to my clients and just seeing such a huge shift and how people were responding and how they felt and their results. And yeah, like I can appreciate the aesthetic results and people wanting to achieve a certain look, but I find so often when people are trying to achieve a really extreme look, it's number one, impossible to maintain. And typically they just go back to where they were, if not worse. So, you know, I started really promoting, like, let's focus on healing. Let's focus on balance. Let's get you to a place where, yeah, you, maybe you're not going to have like a shredded six pack, all the time, but you're going to have a really nice flat stomach and you're going to look really good in a bathing suit. And you're going to feel awesome. But you're also still going to be able to yeah. eat a donut and not, and you're like not, an- and you're not messed up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Your body's working. You're, you know, you're functioning, you're, you're doing better in your whole life, like your relationships, yes. your career, all that stuff. So, yeah. So how do we, how do we course correct then um, from that launch that felt inauthentic? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, we haven't really discussed what we're going to do in terms of if we would do another launch or not. I think we, we shifted more into sort of like an evergreen and like Mm. focusing more on, like I said, sort of like finding that, that happy union between the aesthetic and the healing side of things. Um, and then just trying to be more authentic in how I speak and, you know, putting in call to action strategically. I find that through stories, it's a lot easier for yes. me for posts, um, having the odd spear posts, but just, you know, taking when I make a post about something, then taking that, putting it in my stories, asking questions about it to make it relatable. Like, is this an issue that you've had? Like, what are some of the struggles that you've experienced around this? Um, and then that gives me a way also to reach out and talk to people and say like, Hey, I'd love to know more about, you know, what's going on here. Or or like, maybe there's some way I could give you some direction on this and, and opening up that conversation. And, you know, more often than not, it leads to a phone call, which is where we want to get, which is where you want to get to. 
Yeah, there's 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 so much there. Um, you know, this idea about the skin, about the hair. Um, everybody talks about physique, and and I think I mean I think it's fine, but I I don't think you need to talk about it when you have it. I mean, somebody can just you could be talking about anything and people will look at you and be like, oh, she's a great physique. Like you don't need to say if if you have a thing and it's easily demonstrable um it, you don't need to sell that you have that thing yeah uh, so much and so that gives you a little bit of flexibility to yeah. uh, do a little bit more have you have you done anything have you have you created content around things like skin care things like quality of hair i mean i'm talking so ignorant on these subjects but <laughs> have you done material on that i'd be curious to know how it hit yeah, I actually did. There was, um, I had, a, I find that I go through these creative bursts, like some yes, weeks I'll same. bang on and then I'm like, I got nothing. Like, yep. um, and also, like I mentioned, I, I, I think I mentioned I have a very senior dog. So sometimes it's really, really, he's senior and he's got a severe disability. So that can be really overwhelming. Okay. And I find bad weeks there translate to bad weeks with me being creative. Um, so anyways, I had a couple of weeks there that I was like on fire and, uh, I did one, one post was about like my core and showing a before and after where I'm at and like different things that I've done to achieve a tighter core that aren't actually related to diet and working out alone. So, you know, talking about hormone health, talking about gut health. Um, mm. talking about cortisol and stress, because a lot of times when your cortisol stress levels are high, you tend to hold more fat around your midsection. Yeah. Um, so that was one. And then I did a before and after of my hair back when I was competing versus my hair now Interesting. talking about also hormones because like hormone balance and women, a lot of women, when they're entering menopause are losing their hair because their hormones are all out of whack. Um, nutrient deficiencies, stuff like that. Also stress. Um, and yeah, again, I think I did one about skin too and how I used to have like really kind of stubborn skin and it just was a little dull and I'd have breakouts and that kind of stuff. Again, how, what deeper health problems are going to prevent you from having the healthy glowing. So interesting for me. Okay. Glowing. Yeah. So skin. So here's, can I give you an assignment? Sure. Um, okay. So here's how I do this stuff. I heard you talk about, call it three subjects. Yep. Skin, hair, and I call it midsection, but basically like, you know, I don't want to call it stomach. I don't want to cut a gut. I don't want to call it abs because I don't feel like any of those really encapsulate it. So use a better word than me, but I called it midsection. Okay. But I do almost like a mind mapping with these things. Right. And um, and what's interesting is that you could actually create an entire like brand and massive business around each one of these. Yeah. Um, and even around like one extension off of these. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't know which of them will be most appealing. I don't know if you want to tackle them all. I, what, what you'll probably find is that certain things you'll have more ideas and more experiences and stories of that come more freely um, than others. But what I'll do is I'll look at skin and I'll just draw lines off of it. Mm -hmm. And I'll write everything that I think about. Like there's no bad ideas at this point, but I'll write everything that I think about. So it's like smooth, texture, whatever. Like you're going to have more than me because I don't only think about skin. Um <laughs> But, but you're going to have more, more than I do. And then from there, any stories that come to mind, because the specifics are what's really going to matter and what makes you special here. Like when's a time when you felt your own skin and you're like, shit, why does this feel rough? Why is this dry? Why does this feel bad? Um, and so from there, you might say, um, I'm completely making this up, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, two days after a competition, um, you know, Toronto Pro Show 2017, whatever, right? Like, again, completely making it up. I don't know what this is. And then you'll draw an extension there and like, who were you around? What was there? 
um, what was going on now that, you know, in retrospect, oh, my, you know, my hormone or even specific hormones that are out of whack. Yeah. That were out of whack. Right. Because then you can look at that and tell those stories in a way that nobody else can. Right. Yeah. And that is to me, the secret sauce with this stuff, a, to keep it interesting for you, but the secret sauce for this stuff is how can you paint a very vivid picture with a goal outcome in a way that is visual where there's a clear before and after, because somebody can look at you now and know that that's not still the problem. So you don't yeah. need to say it. Um, that only you can say. And, you know, skin, hair, midsection. There's a lot of really interesting fodder there. And and I like using social, I like doing this experiment because what, what it does is it gives you a bunch of stories to riff off of for very quick content pieces. And I would not put too much into them. Like I wouldn't put too much production. I mean, I don't put too much production to anything I do, but I wouldn't put too much production into them. I yeah. would simply tell the story very quickly yeah, so that I could take in feedback. Right. And then I would look at the comments and then I would look at phrases that show up from other people. And then I would revise my story, tell it again, using those phrases and whichever ones have the best feedback then you can start using that as things like lead generators. Right. With the language that they're using, right? Like you can, you can, um, whatever hits hard, but you can just say like, you know, how I healed my skin after competing or the, the, you know, the five things I did to heal my skin after I was done competing and you can do a quick, wheel of that and then you can say you know i put together a very quick uh pdf with what you can do comment you know skin one two three uh, and i'll send it to you but but you don't do all that stuff first right you test right. all of these appeals first very very quickly and then whichever hits then you can invest kind of more into it yeah um and what you can do there is it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be like a launch, like a sales launch, but I do think that there is urgency, like urgency is important, like expiration is important for getting people to get off the fence. So you can say this guide is only available for the next two days. Right. And you could do that once a quarter, but that gives you permission to promote that guide. Or you can say uh, everybody who downloads this guide you know, gets $200 off their first package with me if they sign up before Friday. Right. It's just a, it's a different way of using the most important aspect of the launch, which is urgency. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, for sure. Um, anything else you need? I'm happy to chat, always. I truly appreciate it. You bet. Amber here. Thanks for listening in. This episode was from a group call from Jonathan's online trainer mentorship, where we host hot seats every two weeks. The mentorship is where we take anyone doing from $1,000 to $20,000 a month or more and help them scale up. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in learning more about, please DM the word mentor to Jonathan on Instagram at it's coach Goodman. If you're looking for another episode to listen to right now, I'd recommend episode 242, 16 roles to get unstuck. Life can take us off path sometimes. That's totally normal, but you do want to know what to do to get yourself back on track. In this episode, you'll learn the importance of self-directed choices and constraints, the differences between when things are going well versus not going well, and the two things to default to. Again, that's episode 242, 16 rules to get unstuck. Thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you next week.